Now, there have been a number of uh, controversies this year uh, out of the White House, one of those being the fashion choices of the First Lady Melania Trump. Now, to discuss this and what else is making fashion news, we're joined by a regular fashionista, Patty Huntington. Patty, welcome. Good morning. Let's actually start at home because Christmas is just one week away. Really big news on the retail front this week with um, the sale of, uh, of the Lowy's Empire, Westfield. Mm. Let's just look at, at the implications, I guess, because, I mean, Australian fashion designers and retailers are finding it tough, aren't they? Well, yes and no, as we've talked about before. I mean, it's certainly, to say this year was sort of an Annus Horribilis for Australian fashion retail, I guess, in one respect, I mean, after the the financial crisis, you know, it was it was it was pretty bad. But uh, you know, there's been so many administrations and collapses. I mean, we, in the last couple of weeks, you know, uh, Oriton, an Australian brand called Lover, uh, very high profile brand, which has now been acquired uh, by by a company called Hot Springs, uh, and this spectacular news about about the Westfield sale. And this, just to clarify, that's Westfield's international business, of mm. course, the uh, $33 billion deal. And, uh, <clears throat> but the Centre Group, which owns these, you know, Australian and New Zealand shopping malls, remains, which, which the Lowy family has got an interest in. So, uh, look, it's a time of huge consolidation and, and disruption in retail globally. Uh, you know, it, it's not the only sort of shopping mall sort of uh, consolidation news. And, 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 of course, you know, the disruption from online rivals, such as Amazon, which, of course, only recently arrived in Australia after much fanfare and trepidation and and by all accounts, I mean, there's some disappointment in the fact that, you know, they can't get the deliveries to people uh, as quickly as, yeah. as they thought. Well, when you've only got one warehouse that's based in Melbourne, I guess it's always going to be difficult on a country exactly. size. Exactly. And, and, and as pointed out by Jerry Harvey, I mean, why, why would you launch so close to Christmas mm. when it's touch and go anyway with one warehouse? So, and, and also complaints, perhaps, that the prices aren't as low as people expected. Exactly. So it's, I think people were very afraid of it. A number of Australian companies, such as the Cotton On Group, which is, you know, Australian Australia's sort of, I guess, fledgling equivalent of Zara and H&M with sort of, you know, a couple of thousand stores around the world. I mean, they say we're, we're already competing with Amazon internationally, so it doesn't bother us. So, I mean, it, it, it's been a very sort of tumultuous year. I mean, Maya has had uh, announced, you know, terrible sort of trading going into Christmas. Uh, it's been under fire from Solomon Liu, its largest shareholder. And who knows what we're going to see with Maya next year? I mean, is there going to be a formal takeover, takeover bid? Uh, you know, watch this space, I guess. It's interesting at this time of year, being in Christmas, I think shops, uh, ground shops, are uh, putting a lot of effort into making it an experience for customers. I went to the shops the other day and there was a Christmas carol choir singing and there were lights everywhere and trying to attract customers that way um, to actually come into the shops. Well, exactly, and that's what it has to be about. I mean, if you're going to... You, you can shop online and have no retail experience apart from actually, you know, the price, the, the speed of delivery, and I guess, you know, how, how well the... But, but, I mean, but, of course, you can't try them on, can you? No, yeah, but, online. and people thought that that would be an issue especially in the luxury space with, with mm. companies like net a But it didn't make any difference at all because, of course, they, they offer sort of, you know, free returns and, and it's worked very well. But th that's right. I mean, they, they need to, companies need to invest in their, their retail experience. And the retail theatre, which is a, a term that's been around forever, mm. uh, they forgot about that. It's not just about discounting mm. as, as, a, 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 as a sales ploy. And, in fact, people are trying to distance themselves from that. So uh, it's about sort of exciting retail opportunities. And there are a number of Australian brands and retailers that are doing really well. I mean, mm. Sneaker Boy, which is the high-end sneaker sort of reverse showroom where you buy it online but you go into the bricks and mortar store to try it on. Uh, I mean, th that's been growing, you know, incredibly well. And, and there's a number of other companies as well. Patty, I mean, you talk about how tumultuous the past uh, year has been for, uh, for the fashion designers and also for those who actually wear them and um, try to advertise them on the runway and the like. Of course, I'm talking about the models, and this is all in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein allegations and now a lot of allegations about model abuse. There have been. And the inevitable sort of flow onto the fashion industry as it has with every other industry. And look, we've discussed this in the in recent uh, Weekend Breakfast segments. Uh, the first one was Terry Richardson, who is an American... And they, look, these are top photographers who are paid sort of huge amounts of money. They make millions upon millions a year. They have all the best advertising contracts, all the sort of the big magazine deals. Terry Richardson, there had been a number of uh, complaints about allegations, uh, it, but he continued to work for the industry. But I think it was the Weinstein effect that really prompted, um, for example, Condé Nast internationally to, to announce that they were going to sort of sever ties with him and any work that had been commissioned to stop. So n no one has been actually sort of prosecuted, but as with Weinstein, there's been uh, many complaints. Um, 
Uh, I said recently there were a number of male models who were about to start pointing the finger at a couple of... Uh, <clears throat> in fact, there's, uh, there's four high-profile. Only one of those has been... Uh, named now, and that is Bruce Weber, who was another icon of American photography. You know, mm. Calvin Klein. Uh, you know, one of one of the best known and best loved American photographers has worked with all the major brands. Uh, accused by multiple male models now of sexual harassment and indeed assault, and uh, there are possibly more to come. Mm. Now, moving on from that, of course, women in, in public office and in the, in the limelight, I guess, always face scrutiny. But particularly this year, we've seen heavy scrutiny on the US First Lady, Melania Trump. That's right. The moment, from the moment the newly minted mm. First Lady stepped into those, uh, the, those public roles, there has not been, uh, you know, there's been con controversy after controversy, uh, starting with, uh, starting with, you know, the, 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 her, her sort of imita alleged imitation of Jackie Kennedy and stuff, and then moving into uh, criticism of her choices and how appropriate they were wherever she went. Of course, Donald Trump has always been pushing American made, and Melania Trump has been, uh, you know, a great advocate for international brands. So, uh, here, look, here are the, the, the comparisons that were made to her, uh, to her inauguration outfit. Um, but she, hang on, she's ready-made. She was a model. That's right. So... Mm. Come on, you can't get any better than that when you're showcasing, you know, the first lady in the world. She was widely criticised for wearing stilettos to meet the victims of Hurricane Harvey, for wearing a thousand dollar plaid shirt in the in the White House garden. Here she is at the Vatican. I mean, that 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 that, that image went viral. This is her official portrait, and she's wearing Italian luxury brand Dolce Gabbana, who were thrilled with with her endorsement. But uh, my thought is, she would be criticised and scrutinised no matter what she wore. Whatever she I, does, that's I'm right. sure she would. That would have happened. But perhaps does she need to connect a little more with the ordinary person? Is that Maybe. the issue? Maybe. Well, she's not sort of yeah. She's 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 not so much known for sort of the the, well, the low part of the high low, which which Michelle Obama was. But mm. of course, I mean, look before, regardless of what she did, I mean, she was going to be criticised as as an adjunct to Donald Trump, who of course has been, you know, so criticised and so mm. controversial. So, but it's been, I mean, it's been fascinating. Just as I said, wherever she went. Patty, we are running out of time, but of course, another issue that we touched on this year was runway diversity mm. or the lack of it perhaps, in some cases? Well, there's always been a criticism that, 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 that was never diverse enough, but this, this year there started to be a, a breakthrough, certainly with the spring shows, and in Australia, at Australian Fashion Week in May, we've seen more models of colour. This is the, the first uh, cover of uh, British Vogue under its new black male editor, Edward Enninful, and uh, there's been a contingent of Australia, Sudanese Australian models who continue to sort of you know, rise and rise in the industry, and we saw older women, we saw sort of plus-size models, uh, and also transgender. So it, it's it's a beginning, and uh, the magazine covers also have been noted as being far more diverse than ever before. All right, great to see. Patty Huntington, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure.